So welcome everyone. Um, in this webinar, uh, we'll be presenting uh, what's new in the NXLog Enterprise Edition, what has been implemented in the latest versions, 5.1, 2, and 3. We'll talk about the upcoming release, 5.4, and mention a few general points regarding the roadmap of our products. Then we'll focus on agent management. First of all, the APIs that rely on our agents, and then the upcoming release of NX, NX Log Manager version 6. And then introduce two new products currently in beta stage. Minder, which is an API first solution for remote agent management, and Raijin, which is a schema-less database for storing events. Finally, we'll have some time for your questions. So what's new in NXLog Enterprise Edition? A topic we are very excited about is collecting logs from industrial control systems. Uh, for you not familiar with the term, an industrial control system is an information system used to control industrial processes such as manufacturing, uh, product handling, production and distribution. So uh, these systems are usually part of critical infrastructures uh, that deliver, for example, power, water, transport, manufacturing, or other essential services. Um, industrial control systems is an old and sensitive field. And our work to collect um, logs from there comes in two ways. So the, the first way is to use existing NX log uh, features to ingest logs from uh, endpoints. Uh, by installing an agent on them. And this refers to endpoints uh, that are either servers or uh, PCs, wherever we can install an agent at. Um, mm -hmm. Over there, we can uh, read Windows event log, uh, ingest files, or uh, browse through database tables. Um, the same way we do with a, uh, with a normal server. Although sometimes we don't have the luxury of installing an agent. And the second way we can ingest logs is by capturing uh, the <laughs> network traffic passively. Um, since there is less change to the industrial control network, uh, investing in um, adding new features as passive components has a um, great value there. Uh, we have recently um, presented two uh, integrations with the popular SCADA uh, vendors. The first one is Snyder Electric, and the second one is Siemens. So the module we use for capturing the uh, network traffic is called IM Pickup, and it's basically an uh, input module that can be added to an agent. Um, if you have an, a host on your network uh, that can be linked to a network switch with a mirroring port on your uh, network infrastructure, uh, then IM Pickup can capture all the data flowing through your network. And then through the dissectors and the uh, protocol parsers, we can um, break this data into fields as any other uh, parser would do uh, with um, NXLog. So the protocols that are currently supported are at the bottom of the screen. Um, the ones that have a particular interest is uh, DNS. Uh, because that's quite useful when when it comes to instant response. Um, uh, customers want to be able to check the queries from endpoints and check against indicators of compromise. Uh, so um, collecting this information passively means that you don't need to overload your DNS servers with uh, uh, that, that logic. And other protocols that are interesting are related to industrial control systems. And Modbus is one of them. It's connecting industrial electronic devices together. Uh, Profinet is um, data communication over industrial ethernet and is uh, especially capable of uh, delivering data under uh, tight time constraints. Uh, DNP3 um, is used in utilities such as uh, electric and water companies. Uh, BACnet is used in building automation and control systems, uh, such as uh, monitoring heating, lighting, access control. And S7 is the uh, backbone of the Siemens communication 
the last two are uh, related to electrical engineering and power system automation. Another feature that is quite interesting is annex log failover. And that gives the endpoints uh, or agents installed on centralized hosts uh, the ability to do active and passive uh, failover towards um, multiple destinations. So um, instead of having uh, one collector as your destination on the endpoint, uh, you can add two or more. And then the endpoint will contact the first one in the list. Uh, if it's alive, then it will forward the logs uh, to it. If it dies in the meantime, uh, then it will try the second one in the list. And if it dies in the meantime, the, um, uh, the switch to the second node will happen seamlessly, so that will minimize any data loss. So the um, module supported uh, with uh, failover is TCP and TLS, uh, UDP, uh, the HTTP modules, uh, batch compress, Elasticsearch, and Raijin output modules. Another use case here is that you could also spread the load to two collectors acting um, as an active-active uh, node. And the way to do that is uh, point a group of uh, agents to uh, node A as the primary node, and the rest of the agents to group B, to node B as the uh, primary node. Then both nodes are uh, busy processing and forwarding logs. Uh, you can take advantage of sharing the load without the use of a load balancer. And if one of them experienced any issues, you can uh, always uh, fail back to the healthy one. Um, other features that are interesting and have been implemented are um, integration work with uh, uh, Microsoft Azure Cloud, and we can forward events to uh, event hubs, which is an event ingestion service. And we can do that uh, by either using uh, the module OM Kafka or the OM HTTP. Uh, we can send events in batches to Azure Log Analytic workspaces. And in order to do that, we use a dedicated module called uh, OM Azure. Uh, this handles all the uh, authentication keys needed um, for the integration with Azure. And services running within uh, the Azure bubble can uh, take advantage of that, such as uh, Sentinel theme service. Um, some uh, additional work has been done um, towards the integration guide with uh, Oracle database, and that refers to the collecting the actual um, Oracle database logs themselves, but also to reading from or writing to an Oracle database using uh, the ODBC protocol. Uh, there's also um, an integration guide for Google Chronicle, uh, using our module OM HTTP. And this is to forward and process uh, logs to um, Google Chronicle. And that can be done I by either formatting them as UDM format that Google expects or sending them as um, unstructured log data. Uh, more work has been done towards uh, macOS logging and support has been added for um, Apple M1 chip and the Mac OS 11. Uh, we have also improved the unified logging system input module, um, and uh, ULS has, uh, has been the Apple standard for uh, logging since iOS 10, so it has replaced the traditional uh, Unix or syslog style uh, logging system. So uh, this is some work that has been done uh, towards that direction. The IM MS Vista log, uh, the module to collect uh, Windows event log, has also been improved and refactored. Um, some new directives has, have been added, and that's to um, resolve SID and GUID from uh, numbers into names. Uh, there is also some uh, work done on um, collecting logs from uh, PowerShell. And that's collecting and parsing PowerShell logs, uh, either of type module, uh, script block, or transi 
transcriptions. So basically you can uh, monitor and collect information on uh, PowerShell scripts that your administration, uh, your administrators run um, and take action. So forward this information to an end system such as a SIEM. Um, finally, we have uh, worked on uh, grabbing information from uh, browsers history. So modern browsers um, keep the uh, log inside in a SQLite database, and we can uh, collect these logs uh, via IMODBC and uh, parse this and forward them for uh, auditing. So if we go through the release notes for uh, our latest versions, uh, 5.1, 2, and 3, uh, we will uh, see a lot of um, bug fixes. And there's also a lot of improvements in terms of fun functionality. And um, a lot of our input modules have been um, enhanced. And uh, the raw event formatting has been refactored. And you can see a list of these modules at the top. There's also a new uh, directive uh, for capabilities, and that's to take advantage of the Linux capabilities feature that uh, allows a, a non-privileged account to bind the load ports on uh, Linux, like uh, lower than 1,024. So if you have a, a TCP or UDP listener on port 514, uh, this directive will be uh, quite useful. Um, also, it, it is useful for allowing um, spoofing of the uh, source IP on a UDP protocol. Um, the NXLog configuration file that is uh, shipped to, uh, together with the installer on uh, all of our platforms has been improved uh, to enable the NXLog manager integration by default. So the nxlog.conf will include um, a path with additional configuration files, and manage.conf is one of them. So by default, the um, NXLog will uh, try to communicate with the manager if it exists. Uh, there's also functions for logging uh, Kafka performance statistics, and this um, is relevant for both input and output Kafka modules. Uh, we have also enabled direct upgrade uh, from NXLog Community Edition and the trial versions to the latest version 5.3. Uh, this unfortunately does not include the Windows builds. So we consider documentation one of our products. Uh, there's plenty of new content under the um, web version of the documentation. There's also a user guide that can be downloaded, and at the moment, it has exceeded 1,800 pages and is growing. So um, what's added there is new functionality, uh, modules, directives, um, more examples, and integration guides. Uh, the team is also working on a multi-version online documentation system that will be available in the future. On top of the work that is being done by our tech writers on the documentation and user guide, there is um, a lot of new blog posts and white papers published on our website. Um, a few um, interesting ones listed here. So there is a comparison between the community edition and the enterprise edition, listing all the features that you can take advantage of as a NXLog enterprise edition customer. Um, there is an article on compliance and how to meet the requirements, uh, especially relevant for uh, highly regulated customers, uh, law firms, um, or uh, medicine agencies. Uh, there's also an, an, a guide on how to optimize this integration with the SIEM and how to optimize the licensing cost on the SIEM side by trimming and filtering logs and use data compression. Um, we also monitor our competition, and uh, there is a, an article comparing us with Snare, uh, but also an article that shows how to use NXLog Enterprise Edition as an alternative to uh, Splunk Universal Forwarder. And apart from talking about competition here, it's important to, um, to know that 
NXflow can act uh, exactly as this blank universal forwarder and uh, pass the events with the formatting and uh, the order of fields that the Splunk indexers expect. And that's especially important for customers migrating away from Splunk that want to have a, a seamless uh, migration to an NXLog agent. There's also information on performance integration, event enrichment, and cutting costs. Uh, some more topics. Uh, there is an article on the Windows locking uh, in general. So that's a great overview on the Windows world and what kind of uh, use cases we can um, have uh, on the Windows environment, such as exchange servers, uh, reading logs from IIS, DHCP, and DNS, to uh, monitoring a registry, parcel, and sysmon. So a very good um, overview, uh, a good starting point uh, whenever um, you're looking for some information around Windows event uh, monitoring. There's also a really good article on DNS collection and parsing. And we have a few modules that are relevant here. Uh, just to mention a couple, there is a IMATW, which is the event tracing for Windows in, in input module. And this can uh, collect the audit and analytical events from a, a Windows DNS server. Uh, for uh, the traditional uh, debug log, a flat file located on a, a DNS server, uh, we can use IM file and a custom uh, parser for those logs. Uh, but it's also possible to capture DNS in a passive way, as uh, we mentioned earlier, using the IM pickup module. Uh, next, there is a work done on the integration uh, with the Windows event forwarding. So uh, we describe how to configure Windows event collector and also how to install it even on a Linux machine. Uh, there are details on how to configure the uh, certificate-based or Kerverse-based authentication, and a step-by-step -step guide on how to achieve the best result. Especially for uh, Windows event tracing, there is a dedicated article. Um, and this is quite important um, because it gives you the ability to read on the fly without having to um, go through the overhead of writing uh, this data to the disk first. Uh, this is uh, relevant for kernel debug and analytical channels within the Windows event tracing. And those uh, logs are, have very high volume, so um, performance is uh, priority there. Uh, finally, there is a work on um, how to audit uh, different operating systems for security. And uh, this involves most of the platforms where you can install uh, NXLog EE. Windows, Linux, Mac OS, FreeBSD, AIX, and Solaris.